Christina, hello. Hi. Welcome to the sun. Hello. What an honor it is. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you. Oh my gosh. Christina's like one of my best friends, so this is going to be very interesting. <laughs> there might be a couple more laughs than intended. <sighs> okay. So to start it off, I know who you are, but everyone listening. To everyone else? Yeah. Who so, are you? Obviously, my name's Christina. I was a junior this last year at Greenville University, so this next year I'll be a senior. Ooh. Yeah, woo. Um, yeah, I'm a townie, so <laughs> I'm pretty local. <clears throat> and I actually asked Sid if I could tell everyone, is coffee a um, personality trait? Like, is that okay? Because I think that's all that I am. I'm not 70% water, I'm just coffee. Like, that's all that I am on the inside. So, yeah. I think because you work at a shop, <laughs> it's valid. I do, yes. So that's another thing about me. I am a little bit of a workaholic. <laughs> I've worked probably at four or five different establishments in Greenville. So on your free time, if you're curious, please ask me. <laughs> but right now, I'm at Shimoji Coffee. So I think that would kind of lead into my Enneagram type a little bit, yeah. so people understand. Um, I'm four, wing three. The wing is very strong, so <laughs> sometimes it's overpowering. But yeah, this is those are some fun things about me. I love it. And you're at Greenville, what are you majoring in? So I'm majoring in digital media. Um, and I also have a business minor, so, Sweet. yeah, it goes hand in hand. You spend a lot of time with Deloitte. Yes. <laughs> if you're listening, hello. And, 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 Any, like, hobbies or interesting facts about yourself other than Well, coffee? yeah, that's a good question. It's hard because coffee's everything. Just kidding. <laughs> um, I do like cycling. I do like painting. I'm working on a lot of digital media projects for Shimoji right now, actually, because that's where my internship is this summer. So right now, hobbies are pretty just focused on, like, work, but otherwise, yeah, usually some more, like, creatively driven stuff. So, so. you want to tell everybody about your uh, mural that you're working on? Yeah, with? so actually, I'm working on a mural for Tower Apartments. It's on the, would that be the east side, I think? On the right one. I don't know the <laughs> Where the girls are right now. <laughs> that's all that I know. Um, so yeah, that's been a really cool project. Um, it's actually Jesus. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. What a surprise. Um, surprise. <laughs> no, but I'm really excited, yeah, for everyone to see it. Yay. Sweet. I'm excited. So, Okay, we're going to dive right into the heart of the podcast. Let's First question is, why did you choose GU? Why did you want to come here? Yeah, so that's actually a pretty funny story. So initially... Um, I had gone to a junior college my first two years and um, had sworn off Greenville because I was a townie. So I was like, man, I'm going to explore the world and get out of here. Yeah. And then I started working at um, Adam Brothers, which used to be a coffee house downtown. And I met two amazing people out there um, that I can still say are my best friends today. Um, and they really influenced my decision because they just had some great things going um, and were both students at Greenville and kind of advocated for the community space that Greenville has. Um, and so after kind of spending a lot of time with them, um, separately, like in their own spaces, like apartments, but then also on campus a little bit, like that really influenced my decision and made me see like... This place is cool. Yeah. It seems so. like everybody's story to come here always involves somebody yeah, that's here. That's and like already their here. personal testimony. Exactly. So that's really cool yeah. to hear that yours was too. Yeah. Um so talk about like your program. Like I don't you switch your major since you've come in, mm -hmm. but why did you choose and decide to come to digital media? So initially, um, I was a digital media major and a marketing major, and the only reason that I'm now a business minor is just to like graduate at a certain time. Um, mm -hmm. So that's still cool because I still get involved in the business classes that I'm wanting, um, but also still getting out um, this next year or this next spring. Um, but yeah, so I chose the digital media program first specifically because, um, it's very personal. Like it's, uh, I get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Deloitte if I need it, which is really nice. Um, and even Jake Amundsen, I have him for a couple of classes. Um, and it's just really nice to have that like personal connection. So the, the program is small enough that you're able to, um, explore things, um, on your own time. But if you have questions, like you're able to connect with the professors about it, which is just really nice. Um, and so I would say the digital media, um, majors, I think there's only like between 17 and 20 just in my grade. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like <clears throat> extends that opportunity for that, like personal teaching, I think. Um, 
Yeah, and there's a lot of cool projects that you get to work on through the digital media program, whether it's just in classes or like since Greenville's smaller, like everyone's like, oh, you're and you're a digital media major. You want to do this for me or you want to help me out with this? And so it's <laughs> kind of like asking me to do exactly because they already kind of know yeah. that you're a part of that, so it gives you more experience. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think I think what I remember when I was coming the teacher to student ratio, or I guess. Student to teacher yeah, ratio yeah. was like 12 to 1. Yeah. It yeah. might have changed, and maybe this is <clears throat> poor marketing me saying that. But I think that's like. That's, that's okay. Right. Advocates for the, you know, personal connections. It's, it's small. Fine. It's yeah. fine. That's, so, yeah. I value that too. My classes are small. Like, what's your, yeah, on average, really nice. how many kids in the. I would say, like, just for digital media classes. Yeah. Um, I had. I'm thinking of the classes that I'd had at the beginning of this spring semester and last fall semester, and it was no more than 20 in each class. Yeah. I so. think the business classes are just a tad bit bigger, but Yeah, not a little much. bit. And, like, the digital media, um, like, basic requirements, like the intro to digital media, that class had probably, like, 30 or 35. Yeah. Um, just because several majors are required to have mm. that class, and so it kind of, like, mixes everyone yeah. together. But cool. What's your favorite class so far? Oh my gosh, that's tough. Mm -hmm. I think probably type an image. Yeah, um, I've heard a lot of yeah, people talk about that class. I love that class yeah. with Jake Amundsen. Yeah, I was, yeah, that was probably my favorite. I was sad we had to go online with that one because, first of all, Jake's hilarious. Can we talk about that for two seconds? I think he has a different pair of glasses every single day. Oh, wow. And he dyed his eyebrows blue. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, that was really cool to work on those projects. Crazy. <laughs> um, what do you feel like you've been able to accomplish since you're part of the digital media program? Like, what kind of projects? Hmm. Uh, that's a good. That's a good question. So I had actually recently gone to a marketing conference with Professor Jane Bell um, at the beginning of the spring semester in St. Louis, and um, there were a couple of speakers out there, and one of them specifically spoke about. Um, digital media in the workspace and also just kind of like how to get connected and how to find your place in that world um, and so I actually was able to go up to him and talk to him about like how to make connections and um, even show him some of my work um, oh. which was really cool and he was like hey you know if you're staying later like be sure to go on this walk that the entire group is going on and we can connect more awesome. um, <laughs> so I would say like when it comes to accomplishments, um, like what you're making in the classroom or like the people that you're building your relationships with are kind of almost like, um, yeah, I mean, just getting to know everyone, but just building that like capability of like knowing how to start relationships, that is what has like helped me accomplish things outside of like Greenville mm -hmm. community, if that makes That's sense. Cool. So like I wouldn't have been able to do that at that marketing conference if first of all, I hadn't been invited by my professor and second, if I hadn't, like, had the courage <laughs> to go up and kind of speak with yeah. him about these things. That's so, cool. yeah. I think outside of Greenville, we call that networking. That's the word I was but looking for. I paused and I was like, yeah. what is that word? In Greenville, we use terms like community <laughs> and relationships. Yes, yeah, but yeah, the big R word, yeah, relationships. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> coming in as a transfer student, and you can talk more about your experience and how that was maybe difficult or if you thought it was mm -hmm. easy just kind of touch on yeah how the process was of yeah transferring transferring yeah so that was an exciting time um yeah I think initially I had gone to junior college just to because it was more financially like affordable mm -hmm. um for myself and my family um and it was also close to home and so I just stayed at home and kind of you know saved money that way as well yeah. Um, but I would say, like, the transition between being a student at a junior college and a student at Greenville, at first, maybe was a little bit difficult because, you know, you don't really know people. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, it can be hard to get connected. And those two people that I had mentioned before that I had worked at Adam Bros with um, had graduated the year before. <sighs> those tears. <laughs> How rude of you. Anyway. <laughs> um, no, I'm really happy for them. They're very successful. Um, but, yeah, so I, like would say at first it was kind of difficult to like make sure that I was kind of being involved in the activities um, and that big R word relationships yeah. it's kind of hard to start that initially yeah. when you don't really know how um, but like since then I think a big thing that helped me was a couple of the like main campus activities like midnight breakfast mm -hmm. for example like I know there were a couple of people there this last fall um, 
that I was able to get close to by going to those types of activities with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's just like, it is hard, it is tough to transition, but also it's up to you, um, like how much of the experience you're going to get out of it, and it's up to you how much energy you put into it is kind of what you're going to get back. So I kind of learned that pretty quickly. <laughs> so you're an advocate for you get out of something what you put into it. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, if you kind of sulk back <laughs> and kind of get lost in yourself a little bit, um, and you're not really willing to kind of put energy in the people around you, even if it's extra energy because you're new and you haven't been there for the first two years, like, then you're not going to get anything out of it, really. So, um, yeah, I think it's important. And that's also just, like, a relationship 101. Like, mm -hmm. you have to kind of put in, like, what you would like to receive back. Mm -hmm. So, totally. yeah. Two-way street over here, baby. One hundred percent. So, coming to GU... <clears throat> Like, can you talk about your expectations and what you thought it would be and how that's met or exceeded mm -hmm. those expectations? Let's see. I would say, um, I honestly didn't really understand, like, that, um, option to have that personal connection with your professors right away. Like, I, that was very exciting for me. Mm -hmm. That definitely exceeded my expectations because I thought it was just, like, you had to make an appointment and, like, you had to, like you know, whatever. Yeah. I literally walked by Deloitte's office and I can talk to him for 15 minutes about something super important, like, and then we just move on, you know? And so, like, um, that part has definitely exceeded my expectations. It's just the, again, like, the connection of, um, people being readily available on campus. Um, yeah. And then I would say, man, I'm just stuck on the, like, the friendships. I think that has definitely also exceeded my expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, because that first fall semester, I did kind of choose the opposite way of what I had been advocating for and just kind of, like, hung out and waited for people to kind of come yeah. to me. Um, but then after learning that, you know, you have to invest in others as well as yourself, mm -hmm. um, those friendships have exceeded my expectations. Um, That's so, awesome. yeah, I would say. That's great, the relationships. I don't know, this came to mind, <laughs> every syllabus that you get, you know, has like, just name and email, yeah. their office hours, and right. says, or by appointment, and I just <laughs> thought of so that. Which is comical, but, like, why yeah, do you even put that? Never do we schedule an appointment, maybe What's people do. What's the point? <laughs> just walk, just walk in, in. And honestly. <laughs> if you're really nice, you knock on the door frame. <laughs> So a big part of Greenville that we haven't touched on yet is mm -hmm. the faith aspect. Yeah. How, can you talk about just how you were raised, if you were raised in the, obviously I know, but sure, <laughs> yeah. if you were raised in the church yeah. and then your experience <laughs> at Greenville and maybe how that's helped you grow in your faith, yeah. being part of a faith-based community. Absolutely. So um, I grew up in a Christian household, so we have gone to church since before I was born. I was in the womb, so I went to church, so that's cool, right? Um, <laughs> very cool. Um, yeah, so definitely a Christian household, um, and I was in youth group, like, all in high school and junior high, um, but I would say, like, going to, um, junior college, like, I did have to choose, because they're not, like, Christian affiliated, mm -hmm. so I did have to choose faith kind of on my own, mm -hmm. um, which was a very interesting growing experience. I um, but, like, I think the nice thing about Greenville, this is actually one of the main reasons that I chose Greenville, was to have a faith-based community that you're surrounded by, yeah. like, in an academic workspace. Like, mm -hmm. I think that you learn things, um, obviously, that, like, further your career, but also that further your faith. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I would say, like, it is, it is, like, a good type of challenge here as well, because there are available resources, like, small groups, mm -hmm. or, like, going to chapel, which is kind of a requirement, yeah. but uh, um, there's just conversations that come out of those types of opportunities that kind of inspire you to, um, like, learn more about your faith that you've been believing since birth, yeah. <laughs> pre-birth. Um, yeah, so it just kind of gives things, like, a type of depth that um, I don't think I would have gotten if I had gone to, like, a major, like, state school or, like, something like that yeah. um, because of those conversations that I'm able to have, yeah. I think you bring up a good point about, like, when I think of faith at school, the first thing that comes to mind is chapel. 
Hmm. But mm -hmm. you were talking about how faith is kind of interwoven in every aspect of campus, mm -hmm. and chapel's just part of it, yeah. and small groups are just part of it, but even in your conversations, you know, at events and in the classroom mm -hmm. and everything you do, it's kind of just woven into everything. Yeah, so. like with my marketing class with Jane Bell, actually, this last semester, like, we had these conversations about how to incorporate your Christian priorities and yeah. beliefs into like a marketing workspace, which is obviously something that um, a lot of people like wouldn't necessarily know how to do mm -hmm. because it's kind of cutthroat or like kind of like mm -hmm. um, an intense environment. Um, and so like that's not something that I would have ever thought of before, like how to incorporate your Christian mm -hmm. values into your workspace. Mm -hmm. Like that's um, something that yeah has been a challenge in a good way that I wouldn't have gotten. Yeah. elsewhere. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool, cool. Uh, okay. Cool, cool. So, your future aspirations. What are those? <laughs> and how do you feel like the world's preparing you Man. to fulfill that? <clears throat> what an exciting conversation. I, I love, love I love thinking about the future. I'm very future oriented. Me too. Um, Futuristic on yes. all my strengths. Oh my gosh. Finder. Everyone that's listening, get a passion planner. I'm <laughs> telling you. Like, it will inspire you to do <laughs> so much for your future. Um, yeah. Wow, future aspirations. It's very broad, um, but I have my entire three to five year plan probably like set out. So, um, <laughs> so initially, I'm not 100% sure what I would like to do immediately when I graduate, but long term, I do actually want to have my own like coffee shop or bakery type of restaurant yeah. deal. Um, which sounds cheesy and like every other white girl's no. dream. <laughs> no, but it's a passion. Um, I think that coffee, like in order to be in order to sell it well, you have to be passionate about yeah. it, and I would say that's something I'm pretty passionate yeah. about, um, as well as just, like, incorporating community, which is something that people find in a coffee house. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, key word, community. <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned earlier, networking, I think those are two huge things that I have learned, like, at Greenville specifically, and college as a whole, but Greenville specifically, um, and I think that that will help me, like, incorporate making connections for my future business, because that's something that isn't established in one day. Like, that's something I'm going to have to work towards for years and, like, plan out and, like, you know, obviously find, like, the location and, like, proper um, conversations for, like, loans or, like, you know, like, there's so many details inside of it. Um, but the base of everything starts with your ability to communicate and, like, your ability to network. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's a huge, that's the biggest thing. And so I think that without learning that here, mm -hmm. I would be kind of at a loss when it came to, like, having a shop. You know, like, yeah. there are so many crazy wild opportunities that come up just from you talking to people. Mm -hmm. Like, just from you making those connections. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing wrong with working hard and doing it all on your own. Um, but it's not bad to have those connections either mm -hmm. and kind of opens up new doors for even bigger opportunities. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have a city in mind or are you just going to figure not out where life takes Not necessarily. I think it kind of depends on where life yeah. takes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that part I like to leave open because you like never it. know about yeah. that. <laughs> I can't wait but to see it. Yeah, I'm so excited. Everyone come. I don't know what it's going to be called <laughs> yet, but... I'll be there. It's far away, but it's <laughs> open. <laughs> Your coffee shop would be the best. So. I'm telling you, man. Are you going to have, like, breakfast sandwiches? Because you have yeah. breakfast sandwiches, so... <laughs> Guys, let me better. tell you. This is also another part of my personality that I just didn't even say. Um, avocado toast. Amen. <laughs> Come at me. I have it every <laughs> single day. Probably, like, twice a day. And you think that's it. gross? No, it's so no. good. And I love it every time. Just put some petty cheese, yeah. salt and pepper. <laughs> Nine mom. green toast. Okay, I'm just going to tell the story. So my mom the other day told this story about how <laughs> she was shopping, looking at avocados, and this lady was like, you like those things? She's like, yeah, my husband loves avocados, too. <laughs> Just eat avocados every month. They're very good for you. It's a superfood. 
That's what chia seeds are super food, but we'll move on and not talk about that right now. Oh, yeah. Another podcast. Yeah. Another day. Okay, what's the, if you could narrow it down to just one thing, what's the best thing about GU? Oh, that's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is tough. We went from soft to mushy avocado. Yeah, oh my gosh, delicious. Hard questions. Oh uh, <laughs> man, that's hard. If I had avocado toast here right now, <laughs> maybe it would make the transition easier. Um, yeah, wow. To single that out, I think, <laughs> is it bad if I say um, the R word again? <laughs> I was like, she's gonna do it. <laughs> I know, I'm gonna do it. And, yeah, so I mean, seriously though, like, yeah. there are people um, that I've become so close to <laughs> that I never would have or had the opportunity to had I not been here in this specific environment of, like we said, like faith incorporated conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, and also just, like, being present. <laughs> I think it's easy to get caught up in a lot of crazy activities mm -hmm. um, and just kind of be very work-oriented, which I can honestly say that from working yeah. four jobs last summer. Um, yeah, I think just taking time to rest and realize how important the people around you are um, was the greatest gift mm -hmm. that Greenville has given me. Um, yeah, because I also know that these relationships are not going to be, like, obviously there's casual relationships in your lifetime, whether that's, like, relationships with work people or, like, etc. Um, but, like, these relationships that I've made here will be long, life-lasting <laughs> relationships. That's good. Um, and these are people that I know I can rely on for years to come. Yeah, so, I love it. Um, Very yeah, cool. the R word, relationships. <laughs> relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. So... That's green, though, but what yeah. about just college life? Like, what do you like about it? Oh my gosh, the independence. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, <laughs> so this is horrible. I hope that no one else does this. Be present where you are. Um, but my freshman year of high school, I, I had this huge cardboard piece, and I wrote out all the days counting down until my first day of college. Okay. Isn't that ridiculous? Because I was so excited <laughs> for the independence of just being like, yeah. I'm in college, college and I can go to Aldi and get groceries if I want, and I can stay up past 11.30 and oh have avocado toast at 12. <laughs> <laughs> and then wake <laughs> up and have it at <laughs> And then have it again <laughs> with coffee. <sighs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a wild time. I was just really excited about yeah. like being independent and mm -hmm. just like making my own decisions and... Um, kind of just having the maturity to, um, yeah, exist kind of on my own yeah. a little bit. Because um, you really don't know who you are until you need to do things by yourself. Yeah. And as an Enneagram 4, authenticity is so important to me. Like, that is just primary. Wow, I just, oh, I need to know the authenticity of myself and the authenticity of the people around me. Um, and so I think that's probably one of the main reasons why I had that cardboard cut out yeah. of the days counting mm -hmm. down until I would be um, kind of on my own, but yeah, definitely the independence, um, the ability to just make your own decisions um, and um, decide like how you spend your time. Yeah. Um, yeah, time management. I love it. Love it. One last thing. Okay. And this one, I'm going to kind of add a twist on you oh, impromptu. Because oh. the question's, oh. what's your advice for high school students looking to college? Students. But you being a transfer student, mm. I think you can offer something for students that are looking to transfer mm -hmm. um, from JUCO or anything. So it's kind of a dual question. Interesting. I okay. Don't know how you so want to tackle wow. that. Hmm. First of all, um, there's a lot of pressure for mm -hmm. kids to go to college. Um, yeah. And I think it's overwhelming, and I remember, and I am not one that cares very much about, like, going to a name brand place, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I still felt so much pressure my senior year on where I was going to go, what I was going to study. Yeah. Um, that was just overwhelming. Yeah. And now, looking back at it, that was a lot of wasted energy. Yeah. First of all, if you're a Christian, um, God is always in control, and you don't need to worry about where you're going to go. Like, thinking about those verses in Matthew, like... He made the flowers as beautiful as they are, and he provides birds with food to eat. Like, what are you worried about? Yeah. <laughs> um, but with that in mind, like, you are still the one making that final decision of where to go. Um, and that is, it's just very overwhelming. That's just um, mm -hmm. kind of our culture has made that a really big deal on where you yeah. go. Um, and my biggest encouragement would be 
first of all, do what is best for you and your family. Like, I think it can be overwhelming to meet other people's ex expectations for you and of you. Like, of course, you know, you value the opinions of your friends and um, even, like, your friend's family or um, your grandparents. I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. that's those, <clears throat> those people are very important to you, but also, like, this is where you're going. This is your education. Mm -hmm. This is your life. And also, this these are your finances. Like... I think people are very excited about like the experience at colleges and don't necessarily remember like how much time and like money it's gonna cost you. Yeah. Um, so just be okay with being realistic. Um, that's I had to learn that, um, and that wasn't a bad thing. Um, JUCO was actually one of gave me so many amazing experiences that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, like I played tennis at Kaskaskia for two years, and like that's not something that I would have had the time for or like the ability to do at a mm -hmm. bigger college. Um, so I mean, seriously, just do what's best for you. I recommend taking the JUCO route and then transferring into a four-year college, um, but also that's what was best for me. So mm -hmm. if that's not what's best for you, then that's okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it just kind of boils down to, again, just doing what is best for you and your family and That's not getting caught up yeah, in other people's expectations. So just yeah. sit down for a little bit um, in that college decision-making process and make a day where you're just just thinking, making a list. I like pros and cons lists. Yeah. Those are my favorite. Um, of why you're considering a place or, like, what priorities you're looking for in a college or like you know just that sort of mm -hmm. thing so yeah I for sure my mom helped me <coughs> which some of her suggestions are crazy, <laughs> but she was like just write down the five things like one to five in order mm -hmm. of like what's important to you that you get out of college and yeah. that was really helpful for me looking at colleges like I yeah. knew to keep like if those five priorities were not met I wasn't yeah. going to go to that school so and I I think what you said about other people's expectations for you is important because that can be really heavy mm -hmm. and overwhelming and while like the people around you and what they're saying is so important like mm -hmm. that matters but it is also your experience yeah it's an um, entire new chapter of your life and yeah. those people may be extremely important to you um, but they may not even necessarily be a part of that next chapter mm -hmm. if that makes sense if you go to different places or yeah. like that sort of thing. So it's just so important to keep that primary focus on how this will affect you mm -hmm. in the next four years because it is about you. Yeah, and I love your outlook on transferring because I think sometimes it, it's just such a difficult process to navigate that mm -hmm. it's just like, I don't want to worry about it. But for you, it's kind of like you've gained two really good experiences. And so mm -hmm. it's good to hear that there's that positive outcome from a transfer story that... Mm -hmm is really awesome. Yeah, so. I think like leadership specifically too, like I wouldn't have developed that without being at a JUCO first. Mm -hmm. um, because like with that two year environment and like you're only there for obviously a very short amount of time, yeah. um, you're kind of required to step up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And so you learn those leadership skills yeah. a little bit faster than maybe some mm -hmm. other people would, which helps you again with like networking and making those connections as you transfer into the mm -hmm. next college that you're looking into. Yeah, you know? and you can have double the connections mm -hmm. now. Exactly. Into, like your workforce. Into course. different entirely yeah. environments. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool. Absolutely. So. All right, Christina. <laughs> Any last words? Um, yeah, drink a couple of special shots for me today because, um, you know I need it and you do too. So. <laughs> drink one for yourself or one for me. Or three for me. <laughs> a lot today. <laughs> oh, thank you so it. much for coming in. I'm, no I'm loving it when I get to be in person <laughs> with people. Yeah. Zoom's great. But yes. No. The one-on-one -on -one connection, man. I really like being in person. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we've already been exposed to each other. So yeah. Yes. It's, it's all good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. I appreciate your thank outlook you and your willingness me. to be on here and you're just so positive and a bright light in my <laughs> life. So this is awesome to get to share it with all our listeners out there. Alright, adios. Peace out.